Well, brothers, today we're going to focus on the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs is written mainly by Solomon. There are some other writers. And most of it is, is directed towards the sons. And the purpose of it is to offer practical wisdom for us to live, how to live um, disciplined lives, successful lives, how to make the right decisions, and how to avoid becoming a fool. He warns his sons a lot about this in the book of Proverbs. There's a lot of mentions of fools. And so months ago, Not my... Quiet and don't be a fool. That's right. <laughs> Months ago, my son inspired me to write down every time I, I, I saw the word fool in Proverbs. And so I, I counted 72. There might be more. I don't know. But, but what I learned is that Solomon was teaching his son how fools behave, how to avoid being a fool, and what a fool is. And so no one wants foolish children. So I figure we ought to learn about what what the characteristics of a fool is so that we don't do foolish mistakes and that way we can teach our children and our grandchildren not to do the same mistakes as well. In fact, Proverbs chapter 10, verse 1 says that the wise son brings joy to his father, but the foolish son brings grief to his mother. That said, the wise son brings joy to his father, but the foolish son brings grief to his mother. So I want joy. I want to teach my children to be wise. I want to teach my grandchildren to be wise so that they can bring me joy. And Proverbs 22, 19, Solomon says, I am teaching you today, yes, you, so you will trust the Lord. And so my purpose today in teaching about fools is not so that you can go hammer somebody and say, look, he's acting foolish, or my son's acting foolish, or look at those fools over there. That's not the purpose of why we're going to learn about fools today. In fact, our Lord Jesus told us that if we call our brother a fool, that we were in danger of hellfire. So we don't want to go around calling people fools. So I learned in Ready Now Recovery that we're going to focus on I. We're not going to focus on others. So today, let's, let's look to ourselves and what we can learn and how we can teach our children to avoid being fools, behaving like fools, and what a fool is. And so I pray today that that's what we learn. And so, what is a fool? So according to dictionary, a person who acts unwisely. A silly person. But I also looked at the synonyms to a fool. A dingbat. A lunatic. A ding-dong. A simpleton. A nitwit. A nut. Nincompoop. <laughs> but what is a fool according to Proverbs, according to the Bible, and since God wrote the Bible, what is a fool according to God? So we'll start with the first one. I'm going to give you ten characteristics of, what, of how fools behave. And towards the end of, a, of our teaching, you'll learn that, man, you're looking at one of the biggest ex-fools up here. And so don't feel like I'm hammering you or not. I'm not pointing the finger at you. I'm pointing the finger at myself and what the way I behave and what Christ can do to, to us. And in this respect, we can teach others how to avoid falling into the same pitfalls. So number one, Proverbs 1, 7 says, Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Someone who hates to be corrected. Someone who hates rules. And Jesus gave us an example of people who hate following rules in the New Testament. And whoever has the Matthew passage, Matthew 7, 21 through 23, would you read that? Not, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. That's an interesting passage. These people here are calling Jesus Lord, Lord. They're doing miracles in his name. 
And yet, towards the end, Jesus tells them to depart from him because they practice lawlessness. They live a life like God didn't give us any laws to follow. And so, in my opinion, they're fools because they're despising instruction. And it's so, you think about this, I've never done a miracle. These guys are doing miracles. And yet, Jesus is telling them, does not know them. So, fools despise wisdom and instruction. God gives us a book to follow. So let us follow that. Number two. Fools hate knowledge. And that's found in Proverbs one twenty two. Fools hate knowledge. According to Lifeway Research, only three out of ten churchgoers read the Bible on a daily basis. You think, they, you think the 7 out of 10 that don't read the Bible on a daily basis love knowledge? We can make any excuse we want to make as far as reading the Bible or not. But Hosea 4.6 says that God said, My people perish for a lack of knowledge. So it's important for us to love God's Word. Psalms 119. There's probably 119 times David's telling us how much he loves God's Word. Jesus said in John chapter 10 that his sheep hear his voice. He knows them and they follow him. Pretty hard to follow Jesus when we're not loving knowledge, his word. And his word is his voice. So again, let's try to be the three out of the ten that read our Bibles on a daily basis and encourage our children to do the same and our grandchildren because fools hate knowledge. Number three, Proverbs 6.32. Fools commit adultery. Proverbs 6.32 says that the, he who commits adultery is an utter fool, for he destroys himself. Who has the Hebrews 13, 4 passage? Go ahead, Justin. Hebrews 13, 4. Give honor to marriage and remain faithful to one another in marriage. God will surely judge people who are immoral and those who commit adultery. That last part of the Bible verse says that God will judge the adulterer. And I think it's so foolish for someone to want to be judged by God. God's going to judge an adulterer. Why would I commit adultery, knowing that God's going to judge me? Who has uh, 1 Corinthians 6.18? Did I give that out to somebody? Lauren, can you grab that? First, yeah, 1 Corinthians 6.18. So sexual sin is the only sin that we sin against our own body. So I think it's pretty foolish to try to destroy ourselves. Pretty foolish to sin against ourselves. Proverbs 4.23 says to guard our hearts above all else, for it determines the course of our life. Guard our hearts. Proverbs 5.15 in the NLT version says, Drink from your own well, from your own cistern. Share your love only with your wife. So in the book of Proverbs 5, 6, and 7, he's warning his son against adultery. Solomon is. There's three chapters just, just straight out on, on, on voiding adultery because fools commit adultery. We learn that why it's pretty foolish to destroy yourself and it's pretty foolish to, have, to want God to judge you. And you're speaking and, and you're listening here to an ex-adulterer. So, you know, God's grace is sufficient for all of us. God is amazing as far as forgiving us, but there's always consequences to sin. And the person writing this, his father was an adulterer, King David. And it's amazing to me that after all these years, we're still talking about this adulterous sin for King David. This stuff doesn't, doesn't go away. You know, and, and same for myself, it just, I would, I would just, Avoid adultery. And I know it gets deeper. Jesus says that if we look at a woman lustfully, we commit adultery. I mean, it, it just goes way deeper. But bottom line is that 
a fool commits adultery because he destroys himself and he sins against himself. Number four. Fools bring grief to their parents. Proverbs 10.1 Fools bring grief to their parents. Commandment number five, honor your father and mother. This is, the first, this is the first commandment what they promise. He promises long life to those that do, and he promises that it's going to go well for you in the land the Lord has given you. But fools do the opposite. Fools disrespect their parents. Fools dishonor their parents. And there's no age limit. It never says, up until you're 18, you need to honor your parents. After you're 18, you don't have to honor your parents. In fact, we see that with Jesus our Lord. He's 30 years old and his mom's asking him to, to, or telling him to do wine, to make wine out of water. We don't see him saying, Mom, I don't longer live under your house. I don't have to obey your rules. And I, I, you know, I often think, wow, he created wine. What if my mom called me and said, for Thanksgiving, bring a six pack of beer. Mom, I'm a Christian. I ain't bringing beer. What would I do? But, you know, that's, regardless of, that's not the point there. <laughs> so let's, let's, not, the yeah, let's not, even, <laughs> let's not even go there. <laughs> the point is that if we want to be like Jesus, we need to honor our parents. <laughs> because fools bring grief to their parents. Number five. Proverbs 10.18, fools slander others. Slander, a false statement to damage the reputation of someone. A false statement to damage someone's reputation. Deuteronomy 5.20, who has that? Lonnie. Shall not fair, bear false witness against your neighbor. That's the ninth command. Fools slander others. Fools break this command, the ninth command. And I'll give an example of, of slander. Sorry, but I'm going to use you again. If I were to tell people, you know, I think, I think Brett and his girlfriend are, are having sex. How is it possible that they're, you know, they're, they're driving alone or something? And the next thing you know, people start saying that Brett and his girl are, are, are having sex outside of marriage. I'm slandering his reputation. Not only is he in our worship band, he's also our youth leader, and I'm, I'm ruining his reputation by something that's false. I don't even know if it's true or not. And that can happen even with the world. We can, we can talk about someone that's, and not know the facts and ruin their reputation because of something that we're saying. That's slander. And fools do that. We're ruining someone's reputation. We're breaking the ninth command. An example of, of things that are not slander Let's say I, I leave my wife, and I leave the church. And then Pastor Haney says, hey, everyone, Ponzi has left his wife and has left the church. Beware of that guy. That isn't slander. Those are facts. Ephesians 4.31 says that slander is evil behavior. So again, fools slander others. Let me recap on the first five. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Fools hate knowledge. Fools commit adultery. Fools bring grief to their parents. And fools slander others. Number six. Fools find fun in doing wrong. Fools find fun in doing wrong. This one's going to hit home because it, we're talking about America here. And American entertainment. Fools find fun in doing wrong. There's a movie called Hangover. It came out in 2009. 
It was actually a box office hit, $469 million. In fact, it was so popular, they made a part two and a part three of Hangover. It was the highest grossing R-rated comedy movie of its time. And so I looked up, I've never seen it, but I looked up PluggedIn.com. PluggedIn.com helps parents make appropriate entertainment choices for, for, for children. And so the movie Hangover, again, which is the highest grossing R-rated comedy movie in the world, in America, had over 70 F-words. Over 70. Had 24 S-words and a dozen, a dozen misuses of God and Jesus using his name in vain. Not only that, sexual content. Extensive male and female nudity. And we find that entertaining. Fools find fun in doing wrong. And that's just one movie. Think about all the rest of the entertainment that we have. Again, Proverbs 4 tells us to guard our hearts above all else, for it determines the course of our life. So men, guard your heart, guard your eyes. Our form of entertainment to some point is wrong. And again, fools find fun in doing wrong. Number seven, fools are quick-tempered. Fools are easily angered. Psalms 86.15, who has that one? Rick. But you, O oh Lord, are a God of compassion and mercy, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love and faithfulness. Amen. It says there that God is slow to get angry. This is the complete opposite of God. So if we want to be like God, we need to be slow to be, to be angered. Fools are quick-tempered. So if we're making somebody feel like they're walking on eggshells, if we blow up, if we snap, um, are there moments in our lives where, where that happens? Yes, but is this the practice? Is this the, the, the pattern of my life? If it is, then the Bible's not calling me bonty. The Bible's calling me a fool. Again, this is God talking here. And God is saying that those that are opposite of Him, that are quick-tempered, are fools. So let's work on our patience. That's the fruit of the Spirit, on our kindness. So again, fools are quick-tempered. Number eight. Fools deceive themselves. Fools deceive themselves. They say that self-deception is the worst of all deceptions. You just don't know you're deceived. You were someone in the New Testament that was self-deceived. Pastor Jesse read the, the passage in Matthew. So if you could read that again, Pastor Jesse. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 through 23. Okay. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. You who practice lawlessness. Talk about self-deception. These guys are before the Lord, and they're calling him Lord, Lord, thinking they're going to be, they're going to go to heaven. And then, to their surprise, Jesus doesn't know them. He's casting them out because they're practicing lawlessness. They're self-deceived. They're thinking they're all they're they're good. They're, in fact, they're they're doing miracles. That's what's intriguing. And I know a lot of people are fascinated by miracles, but think of according to Jesus, one of the greatest men ever born to a woman was John the Baptist, and he did zero miracles, zero. So these guys here were 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 more into performance, into miracles. But they're in church. These are churchgoers here, and they were self-deceived. They're living life as though God did not give any laws for us to follow. Jude 4. Joseph? I 
say this because of some ungodly people have wormed their way into your churches, saying that God's marvelous grace allows us to live immoral lives. The condemnation of such people was recorded by the that they have denied our only Master and Lord, Jesus Christ. So, we would call that super grace. Saying that God's marvelous grace allows us to live immoral lives. And right now, Pastor Jesse is going through the book of Romans. This is the complete opposite of Romans chapter 6. Paul says in Romans chapter 6, Shall we continue to sin so that grace may abound? Certainly not. So again, fools deceive themselves. God does not give us grace so that we can continue sinning. Number nine. Fools spend whatever wealth they get. Fools spend whatever wealth they get. Proverbs talks a lot about money. They blow their money. They squander their money. The Lord God gives us a job. He gives us the ability to work. Man has been working ever since Adam was created. In fact, God put him in the garden. Before he even gave him a wife, he put him to work. And so God gives us the ability to work. And then he wants us to become good stewards of the money that he's given us. You know, we give our first fruits to the Lord. Well, fools don't. They spend whatever wealth they get. They don't even give money to the Lord from what the Lord has given them. Proverbs 6, I don't know if I, Proverbs 6, 6 through 8. Did I get that to somebody? Yeah. Okay, Pete. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. <clears throat> it has no commander, no overseer, or leader, yet it stores its provisions in summer and gathers, gathers its food at harvest. King Solomon is teaching his sons here. An example, and he gives us he gives us the example of the ants. The ants are self-motivated. It says they have no ruler to tell them what to do. No one needs to wake them up to go to work. They're hard workers. And finally, the end, they gather in the summer so that they can have food for the winter. They're savers. They're not blowing all their money. And then think of Joseph in the, in the Old Testament, Genesis 41 and 42. God told, or God showed Pharaoh a, a dream. There was going to be fam, There was going to be prosperous seven years of prosperous times, and then there was going to be seven years of famine. And so God instructed Joseph to save for seven years abundance of what they were saving, and then after the seven years, famine was going to come. And so I was thinking to myself, imagine if Joseph did not save the money because they had seven years of of prosperous years. What if he said, "Well, we have plenty today. Why save?" Come famine, they would have all died. That's not what happened. See, it, it just, fools spend whatever they get. Joseph didn't. He put money or, you know, wheat away, food away for times of famine. And that's what we ought to do. It's wise to put money away for a rainy day, just like the ants. So let us be good stewards of, of what the Lord gives us. And, and if we need help, let us get some money advice. So repeat again. So fools spend whatever wealth they get. And number 10. Fools repeat their foolishness. This one's tough. Because Proverbs 26.11 says that as a, as a dog returns to his vomit, so a man repeats his foolishness. And this one's tough because God's comparing this, this sin to, to a dog. And so think of, think of prison. We have a thing called repeat offenders. They go to prison, they get out, and they repeat the same foolishness and go back to prison for the same mistake. Repeat offenders. And that's what this is here. We're repeating the same foolishness. 
But there's other sins. Think of adulterers. Think of cheaters, drunks, domestic violence. There was a guy I knew that was, was taken to jail for, for, for domestic violence. We had a talk with him, and his response was, this is only the third time I've done it in the last 18 years of his marriage. That was his response. It's only been three times. Fools repeat their foolishness. And then back in 1988, 1991, you all remember Jimmy Swaggart. This is a, a TV evangelist. There was a prostitution scandal. He was caught with a prostitute back in 1988. He gets in front of national television, and he, and he says he's sorry, that he's he cried, sinned. He and he cried. He cried bitterly in front of television. The people were gracious. They forgave him. Guess what? 1991, he's caught for the same <coughs> foolishness again. Fools repeat their foolishness. And I know we have examples in the Bible. King David, did he do a foolish mistake? He did. He committed adultery. But you know there's no record of him ever doing that again? And then Peter, what a foolish mistake to deny our Lord Jesus. But do you know he never did that again? Ever? In fact, he died for our Lord Jesus' namesake. Ephesians 5.15, NLT version says, So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but live like those who are wise. And Jesus in Matthew 7.24 said, Anyone who listens to my teachings and follows it is like a wise man who built on rock. Let me, let, let me recap. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Fools hate knowledge. Fools commit adultery. Fools bring grief to their parents. Fools slander others. Fools find fun in doing wrong. Fools are quick-tempered. Fools deceive themselves. Fools spend whatever wealth they get. And fools repeat their foolishness. And when we started, I told you that towards the end, I was going to talk to you about, you're looking at one of the greatest ex-fools up here talking to you. I think I can relate to all of these at one point in my life. You know, these characteristics here. And yet, the Lord is gracious. You're seeing His grace before you. I'm up here standing, telling you to avoid these things because I fell into these, 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 um, these holds. And now, I want to warn you and, 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 and perhaps teach you to avoid some of these pitfalls. And so with that, teaching our children and our grandchildren to, to do the same. And so, you know, if you struggle with some of these things, seek help. You know, obviously confess your sins to the Lord, but also when you confess your sins to one another, He heals you. And so you're not alone with, with this battle. We all have some issues, but seeking help is not weakness. Seeking help is wisdom, the complete opposite of what fools do. And so I want to encourage you that if there's some issue that you're dealing with, to, to you know, speak to the pastor, speak to Rick, speak to any of us. You know, pray to the Lord for help, and we'll also pray for you as well. So with that, I'll open it up for discussion.